Hi everyone, welcome back to Vedic Life Coaching. Thank you so much for joining me. Now in today's video, I wanted to take a look at the planet Uranus and his journey through the sidereal Vedic sign of Aries. Uh, I realize I think it's in um, the Western system he's currently moving through Taurus and I do remember the videos that came out I think it was earlier this year I did watch some of those it was really interesting to see what's happening via the Western system now it's really interesting on this channel I've had a request to look at Aries as he is in the sidereal Vedic system and on my software I usually have the outer planets switched off at all times and when I do a reading for you for example I never look at the outer planets. Um, I'm a bit of a traditionalist when it comes to Vedic astrology I tend to just read as far as Saturn and of course we look at Rahu Ketu axis and I mean we look at 16 Varga charts, we look at Shadbala. In Vedic astrology there is so much information that we look at that by the time we've studied all of that we've really covered whatever those other three planets could add to the reading. I know that there are some Vedic astrologers who do use the outer planets and I think that's wonderful. Uh, they are very important and I remember when I followed the western system for quite a while I myself used to follow those planets and I did feel some things in connection with Uranus in particular definitely. Uh, I think the other two Neptune and Pluto I, I couldn't feel quite as much but Uranus definitely impacted me personally. So I thought I would put some notes together and and actually look at um, Uranus in Aries why not let's do it and I've got the headline here on my slide it's an exercise in storytelling now why do I say that some years ago I was watching a documentary and I've forgotten what the documentary was but I was struck by a man who talked about what it means to be a trial lawyer and here in the United Kingdom we have we call them barristers the guys that get up in court and speak on behalf of their client. Now in the United States I think they call them trial lawyers and he was saying that being a trial lawyer is, well, I've got the quote here, is like being in a storytelling competition and I think that's a really terrific way of summing up his profession. You know being a trial lawyer is like being in a storytelling competition, wow yeah it kind of is. And when I think of astrology, I can also see that this profession can at times be a bit of a storytelling competition. Uh, who can tell a good story, you know? And, I, and, and that's, I wanted to bring up that thought before I start talking about some of these things because in the Western system, Uranus is in Taurus. And in our system, I've switched him on, on my system, I'm having a look. At the transits and he's very clearly squarely in Aries. So what's the deal with that? That's very different and through both systems, through either system you know an astrologer is telling a slightly different story. I'd imagine you know Uranus in uh, Taurus there'd be a lot of chat about cryptocurrency and innovations in finance and um, you know perhaps sudden changes in the stock market or how we trade or, or money and things like that and you know we're, we're a sign behind so we're, we're telling some different stories but that is a part of astrology. I remember when, when I watched, actually my mum was watching um, one of the very, really famous uh, Western astrologers talk about Uranus transiting into Taurus and he said uh, that the queen has a lot of Taurian energy, which she does even in the sidereal system and he said that you want to keep an eye on her because she might die and I just thought that's outrageous and I completely didn't agree with that. My mum was asking me what do you think and I said oh I don't think so, no way and I said that these are lines that we have put in the sky. We have you know I'm just looking out my window now and, and, and it's just black darkness, it's night time 
And, you know, these are lines that we've put in the sky. And the Western system calculates things differently. We calculate things differently. These are different lines that are being drawn in the sky. Uh, after studying various systems, I have come to find that sidereal Vedic is the most accurate. It's been the most accurate for the events of my life. I see myself most accurately through this system. And that's all I can go on. My personal witnessing of, of what I've seen. The other reason that I wanted to bring up this thing about this being an exercise in storytelling is that I don't feel like I have enough experience or knowledge of how the three outer planets operate. So yes, I'm doing a video because I think this is an interesting thing to talk about and it gives me the opportunity to say that I don't actually use these planets. Uh, that's why I thought I would do this. So there is a purpose in doing the video. I thought this morning about if a client came to me and said, would you read the outer planets in my chart? Would I do it? I can do it. But again, I would probably communicate to the client that, look, I don't have a lot of experience with these planets and uh, I'm, I'm not so knowledgeable. I haven't been trained up on these. Whereas I've definitely been trained, you know, from the sun to Saturn and Rahu Ketu axis and the ascendant point. I know these things um, very well. Uh, Ernst Wilhelm, who is one of my main teachers, he sees the three outer planets as being um, sustaining outer forces, the sustaining outer forces of, say, for example, Brahma, Vishnu, Shiva. I think that's a really good way of, of seeing uh, these planets, definitely. One of the ways I see these planets is that they colour a generation. So that's why, you know, in the 60s you had hippies and that's why in the 70s you had, I don't know, disco or whatever. In the 80s you had punk and like every every kind of 10 years, you know, there's a, there's a shift. Now we've got millennials. So I, I, I can see these outer planets as really colouring a generation and Uranus as leading the way because he spends about that 10-year period of time. It's eight years. I've had a look in my system and I can see. So 7th April 2017, Uranus stepped into Aries for the sidereal Vedic system. Right, so that wasn't too long ago. Uh, but where was he before? Now for eight years, Uranus was in Pisces. So that's from 6 April 2009. So I really had a look at that chunk of time from 2009 to 2017. I've been thinking about what have I seen and what would I want to attribute to the planet Uranus in terms of colouring a generation, say, for example. You know, what about all the children that are, that are born during that time? What, what were they born into? If we have a look at what's going on, we can see that so Uranus was in Pisces, Neptune was in Aquarius, quite strongly. Pluto was in Sagittarius. So to me, we're definitely dealing with changes and shifts and upheaval in the collective consciousness. It's a very collective time. Those three outer planets are really heavily dealing with collective energies. Uh, what was included in this time, which is very significant, is 2012, which Everybody who was into astrology, I, I mean, I was always following every month. I was following my favorite astrologers and um, probably since about 2010, long time, I've been watching the astrologers on YouTube and uh, I was definitely following people month by month. Everybody was keen on the lead up to 2012. Oh, what's going to happen? You know, it was kind of like the Y2K bug, you know, people wondering a plane's going to drop out of the sky. Um, and I remember there was a guy that I watched, again, I don't remember where I saw him or who this was. This is terrible. My memory's failing me. I, I can remember things, but, you know, the two things I'm quoting here today, I, I don't remember. So this is the other thing I'm quoting. This guy said that um, what's going to happen in 2012 is going to be a pivotal point in humanity. And he said that it's not the kind of thing that any of us are going to experience this year. He said it's the kind of turning point that we'll look back on in 30 years and think ah that's when the changes really started I fully agree with that and at that time when I was watching all the different 
astrologers and pundits and psychics and prediction makers and people talking about things I I was amazed at the sensationalism there was a lot of that going on but um but his words just cut through like a knife and he talked sense and he said look nothing's going to happen for the whole year and nothing did happen I was watching and nothing particular happened that you couldn't really point to and say Ooh, 2012 big shift um one of the things on looking back that I've seen, and I saw it in a talk with Nora Harold. Now, here's someone I'm going to quote, and I remember exactly that it's Nora who spoke about all these things, and I'm going to include a link to her radio interview in the description. So if you'd like to watch this, I definitely recommend it. It's an hour long. It has a lot of humor, and it's really funny, and it's really interesting, and it has a lot of galactic history in there and some really interesting thoughts on you know even aliens and stuff like that so if you're into that do watch that but one of the things that she said was that the contracts that have been binding humanity those contracts will be rescinded at 2012 and do you know what i think i think she was spot on there i think she really had some great things to say and that's how i see 2012 and that happened while uranus was in pisces and if you think about it, yes, contracts would be rescinded uh, at, at that time. They're, they're, and I've got some notes here to say that um, the contracts would be rescinded. So where are contracts primarily dealt with in, in, in the Zodiac? We're looking at the sixth house and the seventh house. You see a lot of lawyers coming out of these houses. Now, the sixth house is highly analytical, and this is the place where people are trying to figure out where do I draw the line. There's a lot of analysis. Laws are made here, and you look opposite. Nobody's drawing any lines. People are rubbing the lines out. People are blurring the lines. Pisces, all is one. We're all connected. Everything's a big, blurry, wonderful quantum soup. You know, we're all, we're all together. And the Piscean time, I've got no here, Piscean time of no boundaries. So the dismantling or blurring of work and life, that absolutely happened in, in those years from 2009 to 2017. Um, the blurring of, of work and life is, is happening constantly, but it really began at that time. Uh, boundaries between men and women, those are being blurred in a huge way. Um, you know, department stores are now talking about, well, we don't want to have, uh, you know, labels and, and, and clothes segregated and, you know, in, in two different groups and things like that. Um, the boundaries, you know, even between, I've got here, I mean, child, adult, yeah, I mean, you know, the, the rise of the super vloggers and bloggers and, and these kids, these young kids who are making millions and, you know, any kind of boundary you want to think about, it's very much being blurred. So I've definitely seen that happen within this time period. Um, of course, we've got Neptune and Aquarius, that kind of very high octave energy um, in operating in the collective making shifts there and Pluto in Sagittarius so you know getting us to really stretch our thinking and how we think about these things um, so it's definitely been you know and ideologies are being stretched and tested and changed and all this kind of thing so really really fascinating time with Uranus in Pisces there so we can see that it has colored a chunk of time Right, and I'm sure the Western people would tell a slightly different story as they can, um, you know, but that's okay. I'm having a go, and, and I'll have another go now. Let's have a look at Uranus in Aries. So Uranus shifted into Aries. So when did I say that happened? Seventh April, 2017. Okay, and he's going to be there for a while. And I'm going to bring him up on the system now and have a look how long this goes for. One of the things as I clicked up through the years that I noticed that was really interesting is that Pluto steps into Capricorn interesting so now to me that's giving and when does that happen that happens uh 2020 i mean 2020 is a significant time my goodness we're going to have a lot to talk about um you know there, there's a lot of cool stuff happening in, in these next definitely to 2022 it's it's a really exciting time uh but so we've got pluto stepping now into capricorn and we've got uranus in aries so what kind of a story could I weave here? Well, uh, I'm kind of seeing this as we're really looking at our individual purpose in the world. One of the things is um, 
also it's been a you know you look at Aries the, the time of the self this is a selfie generation you know the term selfie is new and I think that really happened in the Pisces era but maybe that was for the lead up for this Aries era where we are all asked being asked I think we're all being asked to step up be ourselves be leaders you know because we have to you know as say for example governments people talk about this in astrology a lot that governments are being dismantled um it's while it, that's technically not happening i think it's happening i i actually do because i mean you look at people who are being elected let's take america for an example okay let's take america as an example america is full of such brilliant people do you know what I mean? Such sophisticated, smart, intelligent, wonderful people are there. And yet the people who get into the top jobs and power and all that kind of thing, and I'm not saying that they're bad, but I'm just saying that like what I am saying is that America has some really amazing people. There are some people that I watch and really like. Michael Sandel, for example. There's an example of, you know, such a such a good man who imagine you know given a load of power to him what 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 a difference he could make um so with this uranus in aries right pluto stepping into capricorn what i think is that as individual selves we all need to be leaders so i've heard a lot of people talk about this especially in relation to america that it's like it's not one person running a country everybody has to step up and be a leader you know it, it's like and I think that's very true. And I, I think that our dissatisfaction with, say, for example, leaders at that level needs to be channeled into, okay, well, what am I doing? And how can I step up? And how can I be a leader? And I definitely think that, you know, Uranus in Aries, um, we're going to have to innovate. We're going to have to change how we see ourselves, who we are as individuals, I think that um, our individual purpose in the world is being highlighted and what we do for a career is being highlighted. So that's working on two levels, both in a collective way and as an individual. We need to look at, all right, what's my career? What's my purpose in the world? And like, I just think that's really critical until, say, for example, now Uranus shifts in... Well, look at that, 2026. I mean, it's quite a while. Hang on, it's more than that. Okay, 2025, let's say. Um, so this is a, quite a long time. And I think a lot of us are looking at our purpose and our work in the world. And so, so while it works in a collective level, the change happens individually. And we all need to think about career, purpose, meaning. I go to work every day. Do I enjoy it? Is my heart in it? Am I contributing? Am I making a difference? Do I do I feel good? Um, you know, I was watching a video by Steve Judd, one of the astrologers today, and he was talking about the fact that if you don't use your energy, others will use your energy. And I thought, wow, that's amazing. And he was talking about the fact that Donald Trump um what was he saying he was saying that if he was unemployed and not working he'd probably have a heart attack by the way if you can hear that siren out there i'm really sorry i get a lot of um i don't know maybe there's crime happening everywhere i don't know um i do live in a slightly dodgy neighborhood but anyway and i should check the time because this is i'm talking a lot and the camera is going to collapse but look i mean sorry i got distracted steve judd was saying that if Donald Trump was unemployed, he'd probably have a heart attack in the next few months or something. And he was saying that, but because he's working and because he's doing his job, he's using his energy. So the energies can't use him. That was a really profound thought that I came across today. Um, and if you want to look him up, Steve Judd, he's, a, he's another astrologer. I watch all kinds of things. Uh, and yeah, I mean... That was really interesting. We need to use our energy because if we don't, and if we don't learn how to use our energy correctly, the planets will kind of come along and 
dare I say it, you know, beat us up a bit. I have seen that. There's a, there's a person who's close to me. I watch his chart and, you know, um, I know his chart very, very well. I know his life very, very well. And I can tell you, I can kind of see that he's not using the great energies that are available in his chart. And I can see that life is kind of beating him up a bit. And I think the planets are kind of beating him up a bit, you know, um, because he's not making use of it. And they're trying to get him on track. So I've definitely seen this happen. And it was just amazing to see another astrologer talk about it. Um, I'm going to go through these notes really quickly because I'm conscious that the camera is absolutely going to collapse in about 10 minutes. Well, I, not even in about three or four minutes. So what have I got? The notes here. Our individual purpose in the world is something we need to look at. Okay, so your career. Do you feel like you're contributing? Do you feel like there's meaning and purpose in what you do? Really, really important to look at um, for the next few years. Okay. Uh, rising in artificial intelligence. So that's going to wipe out a whole bunch of jobs. So things that are human made will become huge. Absolutely. So apparently McKinsey and Co. said that um, one of the jobs that was going to continue even after artificial intelligence was that of being a writer. And I saw that and I thought, well, that's good. I'll still have some work potentially. But I mean, this is one of the reasons I've become an astrologer because computer generated reports, no, no computer system can read your stars like a human can. It requires, being a dual tissue requires intuition. It requires a connection with the planets. It requires meditation. It requires, it requires nature, being in tune with nature. So, you know, I love this profession. This is working for me. I hope I get to do this, like, just forever, you know. So, um, yeah, but, I, you know, in terms of my notes, Artificial intelligence might wipe out a whole bunch of jobs. Um, things that are human made will become huge. So yeah, being being a writer is a profession that apparently is, is going to continue. But I, I even doubt that. I think computers might be able to, to do some of that. Um, but things that can't be done by computers will become huge in the next, and this, I'm thinking in the next 20 to 30 years. And, and this is not particularly my prediction. Others have made this prediction before I have. A particular person to check out um, who talks about this extensively as Heidi Sawyer. She has definitely talked about this. So what things that can't be done by a computer? Okay, psychic uh, phenomenon, people working with intuition, healing, uh, working with our chakras, clearing our chakras, working on the abstract planes, healing, all these kind of things are going to be huge because as work gets automated, computers are doing everything, we're going to have more time on our hands. And when we have more time on our hands, we're not being distracted. We're not being distracted by careers and jobs and, and trivial things. So we have more time to evolve, to evolve our souls and to evolve our hearts and our minds and all these wonderful things uh, are definitely going to going to be important you know and, and, and cottage industries might flourish again you know um, I worked with a guy uh, in my last job in advertising well the job before and he was a graphic designer but um, you know he was a very talented leather he used to make leather wallets and shoes and, and all kinds of just leather things beautiful leather things and yeah it was really flourishing for him it was doing well because you can't get that quality from from a machine so I, I do think we're going to have a rena renaissance of uh, art and culture and music and, and definitely anything to do with my apologies about that the camera just got cut I knew it was going to happen but I was just wrapping up anyway and I was probably just just finishing off there I think I mentioned um, the thing about how computers are going to be taking over but I think there'll be a, a renaissance and we will be flourishing and there'll be lots of work, uh, different types of work. I think work's going to take on new meaning and I think the seeds for that are being sown in these years while Uranus is in Aries. So remember we're just at the start of the, the journey, you know, or maybe I'll put it this way, like Aries, you know, we're going to go around. And uh, that's a great big cycle. I mean, if you think about that, eight years in, in one sign, 
eight year block, you know, that's quite a big cycle. So the seeds are being sown for, for us to be our individual selves in a new way. And I do think it's in relation to work and meaning and purpose. So I hope you've enjoyed my take on Uranus in Aries. And while I did say that it's, it's been a bit of a storytelling competition exercise, um, one of the things I did want to make mention, I probably should have said this at the start, but doesn't matter, I'll say it now, is that a lot of astrology is, you know, we're kind of matching up symbolism and patterns and how things play out. And I appreciate that all of it could be said to be a storytelling competition. Having said that, I don't think, I don't think it all is. I, re I really do believe in the sidereal Vedic system. It just, it, the dates and, and the configuration of it, everything just matches my personal experiences so well that I really do have a good solid belief in in um, what it is I'm doing but when I start a reading one of the things I always do say is that when you have a reading with me for example the thing that you need to do is yes you'll be listening to the words coming to you from me but what you need to do is you need to listen to your own intuition first that's the exciting part of the reading you watching your own experiences as the information comes in that is the exciting part of any reading whether it's by a sidereal vedic astrologer by a western astrologer by a um, tropical vedic astrologer whatever it is you need to watch you as the words come in and see what resonates and see what is truth for you and what is true for you and see what doesn't sound good see what feels wrong and that'll be the information either to discard or that could even be showing you where you want to be and where you're off track so all of these internal experiences are really important and i will be doing a video on how to have a good reading so um, watch out for that where I will be talking about some of these very points so there's a lot of content to come and uh, now that we've got cooler weather here in the United Kingdom I'm able to and it's darker sooner so I'm able to do this um, a lot better time a lot more easily so uh, watch out for more content but thank you so much for watching thank you so much for subscribing for interacting on the channel for all your comments and requests and everything i really enjoy hearing from you so much and i look forward to seeing you next time